When he was seven years old, his family fled the country as Ian Smith's embattled government began to crumble. The family settled in Kitwe, in north-central Zambia, known for its copper mines. Well, Zambia was known as Northern Rhodesia. Masiwa's mother was an entrepreneur with interest in retail sales, small-scale farming and transportation. His father worked at first in one of the nearby mines, but later joined the family business. By the time Masio was 12 years old, his parents could afford to provide him with a coveted European education. They sent him to a private school in Edinburgh, Scotland, where he graduated in 1978. He travelled back to Zimbabwe, intending to join the anti-government guerrilla forces there. One of the senior officers told him, look, we're about to win anyway, and what we really need is people like you to help rebuild the country. Masiwa took this man's advice and returned to school in Britain, earning a degree in electrical engineering from the University of Wales in 1983. He worked briefly in the computer industry in Cambridge, England, but soon returned to Zimbabwe in 1984, hoping to aid the country's recovery after a war of independence it had won in 1980. Masiwa joined the Zimbabwe Posts and Telecommunications Corporation, ZPTC, the state-owned telephone company, as a senior engineer. ZPTC quickly promoted him to the position of principal engineer. He became frustrated with government bureaucracy, however, and left the company in 1988 to start an electrical contracting firm named Retrofit Engineering. He was chosen Zimbabwe's youngest ever businessman of the year in 1990. Masiwa recognized the great potential for wireless telephones in sub-Saharan Africa because the region had only two fixed-line telephones for every 100 people in the 90s. He saw that wireless networks would be quicker and less expensive to build than land-based networks that required stringing miles of telephone lines across rough terrain. Wireless telephone service would also be less vulnerable than traditional landlines to theft of copper wire for resale. Masiwa first approached ZPTC about forming a mobile telephone network in Zimbabwe. The company, however, was not interested, saying cell phones had no future in the country. He then decided to create a cell phone network of his own. He sold retrofit engineering in 1994 and started to finance Econet Wireless through his family company, TS Masiwa Holdings, TSMH. He was met with fierce opposition, first from ZPTC, which told him it held monopoly on telecommunications, and second from the Zimbabwean government, which swamped him with red tape and demands for bribes. As a devout Christian though, Masiwa was opposed to paying bribes and kickbacks to government officials. He decided to pursue his case through the courts. After a landmark four-year legal battle that went all the way to the nation's Supreme Court, Econet finally won a license to provide cell phone services in Zimbabwe. The court declared that the government monopoly on telecommunications had violated the constitution's guarantee of free speech. Econet's first cell phone subscriber was connected to the new network in 1998. While Masiwa waited to gain the government's approval for operations in Zimbabwe, he was able to start a cell phone network in a neighbor in Botswana. Econec Wireless Holdings then established a presence in over 15 countries, including other African nations, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. The company also diversified into satellite communications, fixed telephone services and internet service. Masiwa decided to relocate his family and the Econet headquarters to the Republic of South Africa in the year 2000. Some observers suggested that he was going into exile from his homeland once again. Masiwa himself said simply that South Africa was the best place from which to launch a multinational corporation because it had the continent's most vibrant economy. Masiwa further antagonized the Zimbabwe government when TSMH bailed out the financially strapped opposition newspaper, The Daily News. Masiwa eventually became a major shareholder in the newspaper's parent company, Associated Newspapers of Zimbabwe, as well as the company's chairman. The government responded by shutting down the newspaper in the fall of 2003. The paper continued to publish sporadically though, through early 2004 and maintained an online version from South Africa. 
Masiu was sued for permission to restart process in Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean government countered, countered by starting criminal proceedings against four daily news directors in June of 2004 on charges of illegally publishing the newspaper without a license. Government officials also threatened to revoke Econet's license to operate in Zimbabwe at the time. The board of directors of Econet's the board of directors of Econet Wireless Nigeria, a company in which Masiwa held a stake, hosted him in 2003 when he failed to acquire necessary financing. A critic told South Africa's financial mail that Masiwa talks up a storm but often falls short of his promises to raise capital. The board turned instead to Vodacom, a large South African telecommunications firm which agreed to provide capital in return for management rights. According to the New York Times, however, Masiwa vowed to regain control of EWN. He said, we've taken the Goliaths before. Strive is driven by focus on determination and passion. Failure is not an option, no matter how many obstacles are thrown his way, and that is his nature. <clears throat> In early months of 2004, Econet signed a 50-50 joint venture agreement with Allied Technology, Altec, a South African information technology company with Altex Capital and Econet experience in telecommunications. The new company, dubbed Nuco, announced its intention to pursue an aggressive expansion strategy in, develop, in developing countries of Africa and Asia. Masiwa became a role model for young African entrepreneurs through his vision and persistence. He won numerous national and international honors, including a place on Times Magazine's list of the world's most promising young executives in 2002. Masiwa attributed his success in part to the ethical integrity he developed through the devotional practice of reading the Bible for an hour every morning. He served on boards of such international development agencies as the Southern African Enterprise Development Fund and the Rockefeller Foundation. He and his wife, Titi, also founded and funded a charitable trust that provided scholarships for more than 5,000 AIDS orphans as of 2003. Strive Masiwa is currently a board member of Unilever, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Africa Progress Panel, Mohouse College, Conrad N. Hilton Foundation, and Ashinaga. He is currently valued at 1.3 billion US dollars as of 2020. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to not miss future videos.